We're going to look now at what we call integrated disease management. This basically is a process that humans use to analyze things and figure out how we can make things better. We're going to look at environmental conditions. We're going to look at host conditions to try and figure out how we can manage things over time. One of the things we often do is what we call disease prediction. We can do disease prediction by monitoring in the field the environmental conditions that are necessary for the disease to occur, find out when those conditions are met under field conditions. Once we've got that, then we can go out and start a management program. A management program is what we're going to talk about in the next chapter disease prediction, we go out, we look in the field, we see what's there. On the left-hand side, we have got citrus canker. On the right-hand side, we've got cedar apple rust. We know that on these, what the conditions are that are necessary for their spread. As far as disease prediction goes with cedar apple rust, you do not get the problem on apple if you don't have the problem on cedar in the area. Therefore, you monitor the cedars in the beginning of the year. You find out when they're showing these particular forms, then you can go out and spray the apple. Citrus canker, you're looking at what are the conditions that are necessary for spread. In Florida, what they did was whenever they find a tree with citrus canker, they will remove all the additional trees in a 1,500 foot radius. They don't believe that it spreads that far under normal conditions. All of this goes down to disease management and disease prediction. One of the things we look at is the infection period. This is called an envirocaster. This will monitor what your rainfall, what your humidity, what your temperatures are. Based on that and the type of disease that you're looking at, it will tell you now you've got conditions that are good for infection or the conditions haven't been any good for infection. If the conditions haven't been good for infection, there's no reason to go out and try and control anything. If the conditions are good for infection. Now it's time to make a process in there that will modify that infection. When we deal with these, we look at monoculture. In modern agriculture, we have these huge monocultures of plants. Where I went to school in Indiana, you flew into the major city, you drove 60 miles up the road to where the university was. That 60 miles was one cornfield. Now it was owned by a bunch of different people. In the 1970s, there was this southern corn leaf blight which came in and just about wiped out the entire corn crop in the United States. One of the reasons it was able to do that is because there was tremendous genetic uniformity. We had this tremendous monoculture of everything being exactly the same. When we talk about monoculture, this is a cornfield. This is not a huge cornfield, but you can see that over this area, all you've got is corn. It's all the same genetically identical corn. Then you've got problems of if a disease comes in that the plants are susceptible to, it's going to take everything out. Monocultures become very important looking at disease prediction. When you're doing large-scale farming, many times monocultures are necessary. This is a little prairie field. This doesn't have a monoculture, which means in the natural environment, this is going to be very resistant to an epidemic of a disease. You don't have material sock one on top of the other. You don't have all of that susceptible tissue there. This shows two different types of farming areas. On the right-hand side, you've got a housing area inside of a coffee field. When you've got the coffee field like that, you've got this huge monoculture actually out there that could spread disease very easily. The other one, you can see we've got squash, we've got corn, we've got bananas, we've got citrus trees, we've got all sorts of things intermingled, which decreases the ability of a disease to spread. When you look at subsistence agriculture, a sustainable sort of thing, you try to stay away from the huge monocultures, you try and produce as much other stuff as you possibly can. Genetic uniformity, very important. The more uniform it is genetically, the more susceptible it's going to be if a problem arises. This is a rather interesting chart. This comes out of SEAT, which is the International Center for Tropical Agriculture. This is basically origins and primary regions of diversity of agricultural crops. It shows where different crops came from. Tropical crops include things like cocoa or cacao. That comes out of South America. Where is it grown? It may be grown in parts of Africa, but if it's grown in parts of Africa, that means you took seeds, which means you took a limited amount of plant material there. You're going to have more genetic uniformity in Africa than you are in South America. You can see a lot of different materials in here. Indonesia produces a lot of latex, but latex comes out of South America. In Indonesia, you have much genetic uniformity. In South America, you have much genetic diversity.